Hello everyone, welcome to the Spotlight Bundle Breakdown for X23, Nebula, and Silk. In today's video, what we do here is we look at X23, all the variants, all the decks that X23 might fit in, and then we do the same for Nebula and Silk and offer you a recommendation on how you should spend your tokens and or Spotlight cash on these cards. I'm Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official Marvel Snap Zone podcast, and before we get to it, I would like to ask you to quickly subscribe to the channel. A, it helps us out. We're still a smaller growing channel and any extra support and love you can show us, whether it be through subs, likes, and comments, ringing that notification bell, all that stuff really truly does help us out. And we appreciate every single one of you who does that. In addition, we bring you at least two new decks every single weekday. Many, de many days we bring you more than two decks. We do our very best to be sort of your one shop stop for decks and news and information on Marvel Snap so that you can basically always not only be on top of the meta, but stay ahead of the meta. Have the best thing to play before the meta catches on so that you can um, get more cubes, that you can hit infinite, you can get your infinity borders and so on. We want to help you reach your goals in Marvel Snap and we'd appreciate if you helped support us as well. The new card is X23. This is a clone of Wolverine. She is Series 5 and 6,000 tokens. Every card this month is 6,000 tokens. Not something I'm fond of, but I am okay with this one in particular because the other two cards in Spotlight Caches are also Series 5, which means they're all 6,000 tokens, which means that this is an 18,000 token week if you saved four caches. That's awesome. X23's ability is when this card is discarded or destroyed, same as same trigger as Wolverine, regenerate it at a random location and you get plus one energy. I don't know if you know this, but in card games, energy cheats are good. Because of that, I think X23 is very likely to be good. The question is, is she going to be good today as you get her? That I'm not sure of. So destroy will be a lot of the meta as X23 comes out as people open for it, right? Destroy and move. Um, because Silk is also in these boxes. As this is the case, I expect a lot more people running cards like Armor and Cosmo, which could in turn cause your X-23 some trouble, make it have a little less value than it otherwise would. However, look, a 1-2 that generates one even one energy a game is great. A 1-2 that can generate 2-3-4 energy a game is completely insane. So I still think this card is going to be really, really strong. Let's take a look at some variants. These are the only um, three variants that have release dates for X-23. We've got coming on 829, baby variant. Uh, I like Scotty Young a lot. I don't love this baby variant. It's an X-Force uniform, not my favorite era of X-23. And like, I don't know, the hands just kind of bug me. Not my favorite. Um, if you open X-23 and then open a bunch of extra spotlights, something I sort of never really suggest doing unless you're an every spotlight person, uh, there is that uh, Eduardo Mello mech variant, which is something that all the cards this month are getting, this mech variant. It's a reasonably cool mech variant if you like mechs. I don't love mechs. This isn't for me. Next up, we have uh, Matina, who is a Venom. This Venom is only a rare, which I think is actually really cool. I was worried that it was going to end up being a super rare, but it is, in fact, only a rare. Um, it's got a very cool like Wolverine color scheme over the Venom stuff. It looks a little bit like Alien, almost more than Venom. I think that this is really cool. Um, for 700 gold, I think this is almost certainly worth it. I um, I don't love Venom variant, so I probably won't get it, but I still think it's really cool. We also have three more variants coming. However, we don't have rarity or dates for any of these. I would immediately buy any of these. I don't care what the bundle is. I think all three of these are gorgeous. I don't really care which I get. Uh, Peach Momoko's is awesome. She's with a bunch of wolves. She's got the little X on her shoes. Um, the claws are out. I think it's freaking gorgeous. It's got that same like wispy feel that a lot of Momoko's art has. We've got um, Rian's art, which is awesome. It's got the claw coming almost out of the screen. I think that one may be my favorite. Although Lupacino is really close. I definitely want one. Um, as much as I love Peach Momoko, I think I want the other two because I like X-23 in the Wolverine costume an awful lot. I think it's a really great look. I really love the design and the changes to it. So I want the Rian or Lupacino. I really hope that these are released soon because they can have my money for them. They just have to decide how they want it. Um, 
So variants, I don't think there's any crazy good variants, although again, the uh, Matina is going to be a fan favorite that immediate releases, but if you want cards with cool variants, then that's seemingly a reason to get this card, because I think that these are top of the line, like absolute top shelf marbles now. Our other two spotlight variants are Nebula. Um, I don't love that they're putting Chibi and Baby Art into spotlight caches. Um, I do actually really like this Nebula, but it doesn't feel special enough for spotlight caches, which they told us were basically the equivalent of Ultimate. So I'm not a big fan, but that this is a cool Nebula, and I wouldn't be sad if I opened it on my way to X23. Spoiler, I'm opening this week. I also don't have a Silk variant, and this Silk is top tier. I'm really, really hoping that... Um, Honestly, X23 is my second, and I go Silk X23, so I don't have to have the existential crisis of do I keep opening for this amazing Silk variant. I don't think I will, but this Silk is absolutely gorgeous. Synergies for X23 before we go back to those other cards. She synergizes with discard cards, notably Colleen Wing, the upcoming Silver Samurai, and Modoc. Please note that if you're only doing a discard, this is only plus one energy per game. However, it's an extra two power on the board and an extra one energy on a turn that's fundamentally of your choice. I think that can have a lot of value. Um, I think the MODOK version is not going to have a ton of value necessarily, though, because very often when you MODOK, get X-23 on the board, the next turn you're basically only going to have a card to play, like, and that's going to be Apocalypse or America. And at that point, like that plus energy is kind of wasted. So I don't love it there, but I think there's some interesting things to do with Colleen and especially Silver Samurai. It's absolutely good with kill cards. We've got um, Venom, Carnage, Killmonger, Death Strike, and Deathlock. Those are the all I want to say, I believe. Hopefully I'm not missing any. The destroy cards in Marvel Snap. Um, all of those will do the job of killing X-23 also nicely. Um opponents run a lot of killmonger right this is the first card that punishes an opponent for running killmonger you want to killmonger me great thank you you just gave me an extra energy she works well with uh dokken deadpool death and null dokken really likes that extra energy because it lets you play the shard and destroy the shard um, as does deadpool because you have to keep replaying deadpool and cards that die multiple time are great for death the reason it's so great with Null is that very often Null and Deadpool have great synergy, but then you have to stop killing Deadpool on turn 5 to have him stay on the board, which means makes him a target. Well, if you can kill both Deadpool and um, X-23 on turn 5, then you, are, you can Null and Deadpool on turn 6 for just a silly amount of power. This card's Arc Rivals are fundamentally Armor and Cosmo. Both of those cards uh, will cause a lot of trouble. Armor is much more of a problem because Cosmo, um, you can play a Killmonger elsewhere, and if X-23 dies, hopefully she regenerates in not the uh, Cosmo lane, but Armor is going to be a concern. We're going to feature a few different X-23 decks in a moment. If you have interest in more, come find us on the Marvel Snap Zone Discord. It's, we hang out in the, uh, I hang out in the section called Podcast Chat with the Hosts. Um, just Go to the Discord, hit that section. I will happily help you build any deck you want with X-23 or any other card. I think it's fun to try and build with different collections for different people. So hop on and we'll be happy to help out. The first deck we're going to look at is a Thanos Death List. I think this is very likely to be the, the, the best version of a uh, X-23 deck because you're already doing all the X-23 stuff in this deck. Basically, all I did was I took out Nova, and I said instead of Nova, X-23. The basic gist of this deck is you kill a lot of stuff, and then at the end of the game, you drop a Null and a Death. So Death is very, very often 2-ish energy in this, in this deck, and it's really frustrating to have to choose between Death and Null. This deck, because of X-23 and because of the uh, Time Stone, does not have to make that choice. It can go, okay, so I'm going to drop 12 power here and 30 power there. And now you've got one Shang-Chi, I've got a 15 power Venom over here. And I've got a 6 power Carnage and a 6 power Bucky. And it's just, like, go to town. This deck is absolutely sick. I played a version of this, um, again, that was running Nova over X-23, and it was stellar. It's one of my favorite decks in, like, the history of Snap. I think it's an extremely strong deck, and this is where you want to go. Um, you could... Maybe pull this off without Null. I wouldn't super suggest it. Um, Taskmaster could be a reasonable replacement outside of X-23. That's the only high series card. Also, hey, in your destroy decks, as a general rule, if you can avoid it, stop cutting Bucky. 
Um, I know Wolverine is nearly as good if you're running Galactus, but if you're not running Galactus, what Bucky fundamentally very often does is um, it the tempo of being able to go Bucky into Carnage, right? Or Bucky into X-23 and Carnage even better, leaves you with 10 power in a lane early, and that's just like, it's going to help you get priority, it's going to help you control the game, and sometimes that 10 power is just enough to like really control and win a lane against certain decks because it stays under Shang-Chi at that power level. It ends up really good. Like, I don't like cutting Bucky. I don't understand why so many people are doing it. Like that. Next up, we have My Destroy. This is my own personal version of the list that so many are playing with Deadpool. Um, I like this version because it's not necessarily a Deadpool deck. It's a deck that can play Deadpool, but it's not a Deadpool deck. Um, you want to be using X-23 fundamentally for extra energy. It opens up, as it always does, the last turn of Null and Deadpool, which is easy to pull off or Null and Death, which is harder. Forge is absolutely amazing, the recently buffed Forge here, because you can go um, 1 X-23 to Forge into Deadpool, into Carnage, and kill them all, right? And then you've got an 8-power Carnage, and you've got a 8-power um, Deadpool already in hand, and the next turn you have 5 energy, which means you can now go like, okay, Bucky and uh, Deadpool and Deathlock, or Deadpool and... Uh, yeah, like just a million combos, right? Um, you can now play Deadpool uh, and Killmonger, get another extra energy for the next turn, and you just start to go off. And as long as you can keep that kill going, keep that energy going, your null and death end up insane. Um, you also have the last turn option of... It also loses priority, so I really love this play. But your last turn option, not that X-23 is necessary for this particular play, but your last turn option of like an 18th whatever power Deadpool, and you can just copy that with Taskmaster on the last turn. If they don't have Cosmo and they don't have priority, good luck winning that matchup to the opponent, right? Like, it's super duper powerful. Next up, we have a Specy deck. I really like the way Specy builds these decks, so I'm trying to highlight his decks uh, a little more in these videos. Specimen Snap is... He's a major creator. You probably know who he is, but he's a really, really great creator. He's actually one of my co-hosts for all his favorites, so happy to highlight him. Um, this version is all in on Deadpool. So you'll note no death, no null. It's running America for consistency. It's very similar to the other version, but this is all in on Deadpool. Um, throughout the game, you'll just often find that you need that extra energy to get Deadpool out, to be able to play that Hulkbuster and Deadpool together that turn so that you can play a Venom next turn, right? so on so forth um being able to go um to do that early on is just like crazy crazy powerful right like having the ability to go um a turn three deadpool into hulkbuster is just gonna like now you have a 12 power deadpool immediately for turn uh for turn five right like because you kill at turn four if you can kill at turn five you're at 12, 24, and now you're just like, all right, copy that with Taskmaster, have a great day. And then you just have other good tempo cards like Dak and, and um, Venom, right? Like, they're just also going to have a ton of power. And last turn of the game, again, sometimes you're not going to have Taskmaster, right? But you're going to have a big old Deadpool, and you need to win a second lane. If you killed X-23 on 5, you can play Deadpool for however crazy points, and Chavez. This deck does want to run if it doesn't see Deadpool relatively early. This is straight up a Deadpool deck, but if you see Deadpool, this is an extraordinarily powerful deck. Next, we have the discard version. I like this one because it's got the uh, Lockjaw shenanigans. X-23, if you ever don't have discard, being thrown into Lockjaw is a reasonable use for it, right? Like, it's going to get you something better. It also... um. Mirage seems pretty decent for a little bit of extra stats on the board. Again, discarding the card is not easy. Um, you've got Modox, but, um, but Modox could have extra value here because, like, the lockjaw thing means that sometimes you'll have uses for that extra energy at the end of the game. Um, there's also no America here, so, like, you could draw whatever on the last turn. And if you've got a couple swarms and apocalypse, so on, you end up, like, throwing um, a card in to lockjaw along with your, like, Apocalypse play. Um, Colleen Wing is your main way to chuck X-23. She'll also chuck Swarm. She'll also chuck whatever the Mirage is. All this grows Morbius. Uh, Mirage grows Collector. It ends up working out really, really well, I think. 
Um, this is my current favorite discard list. I'm not a giant discard stan. I don't love discard, but this is, I think, the most fun and least linear way to play discard, along with one of the most powerful in the game. I don't think X23, bluntly, is a very good discard card. I think it's an okay discard card. This list might be better with a different card in that one drop slot. An Echo, for example, to protect your, um, to protect your Wongs or protect your Honor Fields. Maybe better. Obviously, that's another expensive card, another Series 5 card, though. So take from that what you will. Final thoughts. Does X23 look worth it? Well, first, do you have at least four spotlight caches? Please don't open for only one new card. If you have all um, of the other cards, right, and you're only missing X23, please stop opening unless you have four spotlight caches. Um, a member of my Discord, who I like a lot, Hi Bishop, does that all the time and keeps getting screwed because it's a bad plan and doesn't work out. One of the ways to decide if you want to open is if you feel like you must have Alioth and Silver Samurai. Alioth is coming the second week of September and Silver Samurai is coming next week. If you feel like you must have both, then you're going to need to budget. I think Alioth is must have. I think Silver Samurai is going to be great, but not necessarily must have. So if you're willing to skip Samurai, you should be able to hopefully open X-23 and then have enough boxes to be able to go back to Alioth. Do you have 6,000 tokens? If you have 6,000 tokens and you're willing to spend them, that helps to change things, right? Also important, though, the week before Alioth is Jeff. I would rather have, I would straight up, straight up rather have Jeff than X-23. I would rather have Jeff than X-23, and Jeff is in Spotlight Caches in two more weeks from now. So you have to compare X-23 to Jeff as you make this decision. However, if you're missing Silk and or Nebula, this week's boxes are better. So Silk is like an absolute must-have card right now. So if, like, if you don't have Silk, specifically Silk, Nebula less so, but Nebula is still great. You can usually replace Nebula with Sunspot. The deck gets worse, but not like terribly worse. Um, do, do you have Silk? If you don't have Silk, you don't have X-23, and you have four boxes... I think that I don't think anything except maybe Alioth is higher value to use your spotlight caches on. And because both are series five cards, that's 12,000 tokens worth of stuff you're getting for those hopefully less than four boxes. It's great value. This is the best value I think we've seen. Spotlight card Silk. Silk is series five, 6,000 tokens. After any card is played here, this moves to another location. Sideways Titania has become meta because of decks. It ends up one of the best cards in the game. It's in the Lambi deck um, that he's been winning tournaments with and like dominating. It's it. it look, it's in the tier one um, list with Legion. Safety Blade has an absolutely sick version that runs Silk and Arrow. It goes in everything and it's great right now. It's 2-5, it's just a lot of stats, and it also adds up with a lot of different synergy with cards like Raven. So, Silk is great. I don't know if I can make that cl more clear somehow. You should strongly be considering getting Silk right now. This is a tier one, top of the line card in the medic. Let's take a look at some Silk decks so you can see if this is a card that you feel like you should own. The first is obviously Lambie's Confusion. This is also known as Silky Smooth. This is the version that he run the most won the most recent Snap Fan Open with. Um, this deck is completely sick, and it doesn't super work without Silk. You can run Cloak in that spot; it's good, but it's not great. And I know Jeff is also in the deck, but Jeff can very very easily be Nightcrawler in this list, and it doesn't lose too much. Whereas Legion is actually very important. Um, because you have all these move cards, so like getting locked down um, isn't terrible. Like locking down a lot of the board isn't terrible because you can still like have Captain Marvel or um, Silk win you a location. The so Legion is like super, super great here. Um, Kitty is also technically Series 5, but if you're playing long enough to have like most of these cards, then you probably got Kitty for free when everyone got Kitty for free. If you didn't, then Kitty is another must have card, and Kitty is coming up in next week's caches. So that's worth knowing. Kitty is next week. Um, you want to basically get Angela and Craven around and ping pong uh, Silk between the two using Kitty Pride. You can do that. You win lots of games of Snap. Captain Marvel moves things. Everything is like 5 to 8 power by the end of the game. Uh, so you duck under Shang-Chi, but you can still Shang-Chi them. 
this deck is a thing of beauty it's a marvelous and powerful deck and it alone is enough reason to get silk um this is safety's version that i just mentioned earlier it's also got nebula in it as a nice bonus but nebula could very very easily be sunspot in this deck again uh spider ham could be any good too although spider ham is very valuable in messing up your opponent's things i would actually make spider-man i think Iceman if it weren't spider ham um everything else should be affordable jeff again nightcrawler cool um if you are making those changes by the way maybe you want angela but we're getting into the weeds a little bit now the idea here is that you use your early tempo stuff to get out cards like spider-man miles silk all of these end up pumping craven nebula pumps herself then you're ahead going into turn five and you can play wave and if your opponent is playing a bunch of four, uh wave sorry and another card usually wave and jeff or wave and a cheap miles or whatever right at that point you can spend your last turn they can only play one card if you're ahead in enough locations you pull arrow into the one location you don't care you arrow into the location you don't care if you lose you win the other two game over or you drop magneto and magneto says okay well they've got dark hawk and i don't know rock slide and whatever around and now all of those are in this one location and magneto is either winning or losing that location right because you can make that location be one that has craven in it and then you're pulling these things and making your craven huge and then like you end up with like 16 18 power there that just goes over the top of their mid-range nonsense all of this works absolutely great this is one of my favorite decks in the game right now um i should do it like top five favorite decks at some point soon because i think that my like favorite decks are different than the meta's favorite decks right now um if you didn't check out yesterday's video by the way we have like a completely nuts surfer evolutionary that's one of my five favorite this is one of my five favorite that destroy deck we looked at earlier in this video is one of my five favorite the Deadpool one um but like this is sick and needs to be played but you also need silk to have it like there are there are two other series five cards and one other series four card in this deck and i think they're all replaceable and i think silk is not which is why she is so very valuable our next spotlight card is Nebula. Nebula is a Series 5, 6,000 tokens, and a former Season Pass card. I could not more strongly encourage you to buy Season Pass. Basically, they save you money down the line by saying, give me $10 now, and then you get more than the value back in gold and variants and credits, like six times more or something silly. Um, but if you didn't, now is your chance to get Nebula, or if you started the game later. Each turn, your opponent doesn't play a card here, plus two power, except the turn you play this seems good right because it is um it's a little weak to kitty it's a little weak to move so it's not super meta but you basically force people to play where you want and it comes in and out of exactly how good it is in the meta it ends up being honestly just kind of great overall this is specie i told you we were talking about specie's decks uh this is specie's discard it runs nebula in that one drop slot this is more of a straight discard that runs stock in and absorbing man because you can um go um lady sif into absorb men or dock into absorb men and just get some extra discards that way nebula sits there growing quietly in a corner it's awesome um you drop dracula you've got apocalypse you've played discard before this is like the standard discard um i do think that if you're playing standard discard you need to add gambit right now and the reason you had gambit right now is because that blue is still one of the most powerful cards in the meta and it's very often their only card on the board so if you go on turn two, Colleen or whatever, to discard Swarm, right? Or you have a Nebula who's gained a couple power. And then they play Zabu, and you have Initiative. You can play Gambit before they can do anything else. Your Gambit will kill, almost automatically, kill their Zabu, and then you win the game. So, like, that seems like it's worth just running Gambit for that. You have the high tempo of deck, and you have Nebula, another high tempo card. This is basically saying, if I have all this tempo... I can go over the top with my late game power spikes of Morbius Dracula. We have one more. I hate this deck, but I figure I have to feature it sooner or later on the channel. Um, we talked about this like a month ago. Revis actually originally made it, but all the big creators realized it exists now. So like our your Dexters and TLSGs and so on are making this uh, videos about this now. But like this deck is like over a month old now from Revis gotta pay attention to these smaller graders they again get you ahead of the curve nebula is like a must-have here 
Um, basically, you're using your one drops to grab early tempo, using Shocker to hopefully make a She-Hulk Hulk or Infinite cheaper, Magic to make an extra turn, and then Leech protects your magic. So, like, unless they're legioning away your Limbo on five, it says you cannot, unless you top deck that legion, um, get rid of it on turn six because Leech has gotten rid of the opponent's card's abilities. At that point, you skip turn six, and you drop an Infinite and a She-Hulk, or a She-Hulk and Hulk. And you win the game because you just added a stupid amount of power to the board. Sunspot grows, Misty grows, Cyclops sticks things down, and it's just wildly powerful. It's a crazy, crazy strong deck. It's one of the best decks in the game. It's the second best high evolutionary deck, I think, right now. The best is the one from yesterday afternoon's video from Fozzie, which, again, I'm urging you to check out. But this is another awesome home for Nebula. So, should you open this week? Yes. I don't think there's, like, too much argument. Um, if you need Silk, like, it's a 1,000% yes. If you need Nebula, it's a 1,000% yes. You should open and just get X-23 and Nebula. You should open and just get X-23 Silk. If you are just missing X-23, should you open? I don't know. That's going to depend more on um, are you spending a little bit and are you, do you really, what do you think is better? Um, like Jeff, Silver Samurai, and uh, of Jeff, Silver Samurai, and Alioth because you will not immediately have all the caches for them unless you've been hoarding for quite a while. If you've been hoarding long enough to have all of these, then obviously go for it, right? If you have Jeff, I think I'd rather have X-23 right now than Silver Samurai, though I do think Silver Samurai will eventually be better. I think I'd rather have um, X-23 right now because it just opens up a lot of cool meta decks for you. Um, and if you start saving after opening for this week, you should have four spotlight caches again for Alioth, which I think is the next important card. However, you'd only have three for Jeff, so you're going to have to make a really difficult choice if you don't have Jeff. All right, that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you made it this far, like, sub, comment. Thank you. Appreciate you. See you tomorrow for more Snap Take. Peace.